Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2022 Rivian R1T. Below me are four electric motors as well as a single speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Rivian R1T because Rivian is the new kid on the block right now. This is their first year of release. They are built here in good old Illinois and it's always exciting to be driving a new nameplate. And so let's see how Rivian's freshman release stacks up. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. You get a video of your car just like this one, and you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. Well, this electric drivetrain altogether makes about 831 horsepower. Now, there are two different setups that you can get currently for the Rivian R1T, and that is either four motor or two motor. Now, all of the R1Ts are four wheel drive, but you can select between the four motors, which is one motor at each wheel, or just the simple two, which one motor for the front wheels, one motor for the rear, still retaining that all wheel drive, which I think is super, super unique. Now I can go through all the numbers and tell you everything, but that's not really gonna help. What is it like to drive the Rivian R1T? Well, it feels about the same size as an F-150 or Silverado or most modern trucks. It doesn't feel as big as the Hummer EV. The Hummer EV felt like an apartment complex. This actually feels a little bit more manageable the ride is nice and soft, but what really captures me is how quiet it is in here and how there's no squeaks or rattles coming from anywhere. All of the materials in here are at least holding on well enough to not make noise while driving, something that some of its competitors can't exactly say. So that is a really, really nice feature. It handles great. It performs really, really well. And unfortunately, because it is so quiet, the loudest thing you'll probably hear in the video is the windshield wipers, because it is raining today, unfortunately. Speaking of performance, before we get into the interior, let's just see how it performs. Put my foot into it here for a second. Oh my God. <laughs> Take that, Raptor! <laughs> that, whoo, that is quick. It is, oh, and it feels very tight. There's no lag or anything, and, and that's across the board for EVs, but it still gets me every time, man. This thing will get up and skedaddle when you want it to. I love that about it. So with the drivetrain out of the way, let's talk about the interior and some of the tech features. Well, in front of me, I do have a customizable digital gauge cluster. On the steering wheel on the left and right, I have two different scroll knobs for various things. But the coolest thing is that not only I get wood trim, but I get that awesome brand new Rivian logo, which is just so cool to be driving a car with a new logo. I mean, I've driven over 900 different cars. And so that to me is very exciting. Off to the left, I do have more wood grain on the dash. Now this is real wood grain used in the Rivian, which I love, but I don't get any headlight switches. I get a vent and that's it. Moving on to the door, similarly minimalist. I have just four window options. My latch should get in and out and that's pretty much it. Now we will go into the center. I get this giant infotainment screen. We'll pull over and talk about it. All right, so let's talk Rivian R1T infotainment. So we'll start off down here with the navigation. I really, really love this map. First of all, this will show you all of the available chargers and you can actually select which charging network you would like to use. Electrify America, ChargePoint, EV Connect, GreenLots, EVGo, or Rivian's own system, which unfortunately at the time of this video, I don't believe they have any in my area. Oh, they have some all the way up in uh, Michigan. So I don't think I'd make it that far to even charge, but still cool nevertheless. Moving over here, we do have our Spotify and audio content which is really, really cool. I do have my drive modes. So over here we have all purpose and I like that it changes this image. I wish that it had a little bit more cooler images like the Hummer EV it has these great, great graphics. And that's one of the things I praised the Hummer EV for, but these images themselves are fantastic as well. They look computer generated. I also have conserve mode, off road, so I can do all terrain, soft sand, rock crawl, rally, or drift. Now that is pretty freaking cool. 
off-road drift mode. I mean, who would have thought? And then we do have towing mode as well. But down here at the bottom, interestingly enough, I do have ride modes that I can change at any time. So I have soft and stiff. I also have brake regeneration, so I could set that to high or standard. Even at standard, it's pretty aggressive brake regen, and I have yet to find a way to turn it fully off. Then I do have stability on and off, and then I can do my ride height. So this does have air suspension, and I can raise and lower the truck whenever I feel like it. Again, awesome, awesome features. Coming over here, we have even more fun stuff. I can open up the hood and the charge port, as well as the gear tunnel, tonneau cover, and tailgate, which we'll talk about in a second. I can lock and unlock the vehicle, fold the mirrors, adjust the pedals and steering wheel and passenger windows, and I can turn it on to car wash. So this will close the windows, turn off the charge port, mute the parking sensors. So if you're gonna take it through a car wash, you can actually put it into a special mode. It's the first time I've seen that on a vehicle like this, and that's really, really neat. I also have gear guard video. So this is basically like Tesla's sentry mode, which is very nice. Coming over to here, I have settings. I can go to the vehicle and get all my vehicle proximity settings, blah, blah, blah. And then I can even take a look at my cameras. So this is a front facing camera. This is a 360 camera and I can change some views and things like that. This is my rear facing camera. And when I turn the steering wheel, you can see the lines themselves move as well. Pretty smooth if I do say so myself. Coming all the way back over here, we forgot to talk about the climate controls. So I do have climate controls. We can turn on some fans here. We'll try to turn on low so it doesn't bother the microphone, but you actually change the vents by going like this. So you can't manually adjust them yourself. You have to do it through the screen, which is a little bit annoying. And I would hope that these systems won't break, but you never know. I do have a heated steering wheel, heated seats, and ventilated seats. Ventilated seats are very, very cool. And then I also do have pet mode. So if you want to run into the supermarket, but leave your golden retriever in here, you can do that. You could set it to pet mode and the vehicle will maintain a certain temperature so that they don't overheat or freeze in the car while you're in the store, which is really, really cool. And so there are plenty, plenty more things that I can talk through in here, but I've already spent a long, long time on the infotainment. That's just scratch the surface but really really great features here in the Rivian R1T. Down below that infotainment screen I have two more vents of course controlled the same way you control the other ones and something I really like is that over on the dash this is a launch edition Rivian which is really really cool it says that but it also says Rivian embossed into the wood itself really really enjoy that moving down to the center console i have this giant storage area and this is the first part of this review that you really start to notice that this is a adventurous vehicle if you go on rivian's website they advertise this and the r1s which is the suv variant as electric adventure vehicles and so that's going to become very clear with the rest of the video but i love this giant storage area then we do have cup holders so for the first time in history History. A Rivian is going to go up against the big friggin bottle and unfortunately I have to give it a fail for the big friggin bottle test which is disheartening for a pickup truck most pickup trucks do pass but unfortunately the new kid on the block does not <laughs> Then I do get a center console. It has this nice rubberized anti-slip surface and I can open up the center console as well, which is very, very handy. And then we got to talk about the seats. Now the seats are actually not finished in leather, although they do appear like it. This is vegan leather, AKA vinyl. So these are vinyl seats. They are decently comfortable as we talked about in the center screen. They are heated as well as ventilated. They are power and they are memory. So, I mean, what more can you really want there? However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the Rivian R1T. A couple of things to note back here. First of all, I do have my own touchscreen for my own climate controls down here. Absolutely love that. I also do get two USB ports, USB C's, so they do feel very, very modern. I also have USB C's at the backs of the headrests back here. I do have hooks so I can hang, you know, dirty clothes or whatever it is. The seats themselves, same material as found up front. They say Rivian in them. And what's cool is that I do have this pull down center console. I get extra storage in here as well and two cup holders, but I can raise this little trap door and I can actually access the gear tunnel, which this is weird. There's so much open space back here 
you can access the gear tunnel. So if you have like a case of water on a road trip or something, you're going to South Haven for the weekend, you have a case of water back here because you don't want to take up space up here, but you can still reach through, grab your bottle of water, whatever it is, and that is really, really awesome. Super cool stuff here in the Rivian R1T. There's always something to look at. But now let's brave the rain and talk about all of the storage options on the outside. All right, so we're on the back of the Rivian R1T. And first of all, let's talk about that gear tunnel I was just talking about. So you can open it from up here, it pops it out, and then this folds out and it does the exact same on the other side. So we can run around here, try to do this quickly, touch this button here, open it, and you could see all the way through the truck. That is a really, really cool feature. And these will support about 200 pounds. They also have little opening things in them as well. But this is super unique to the Rivian, and I love that feature. Coming around here, we do have a metal tonneau cover. You open it with this button here, and it is a power tonneau cover. Really, really cool, and it can actually support some weight on top of it as well, and it just makes your things more secure. We do have a tailgate button here drops down the tailgate like so. We do have some tie down hooks here, but over here we have the good stuff. So it's kind of hard to access, but, but that is an air tank. So if you need to fill tires or something, you can. And then these, there's actually a, basically a cord that goes from here to here and it'll tighten. And so it works as a big bike lock for anything that you put back here. You could basically lock it in place with that. That is really cool. And then also you can come down here. I know we're kind of speed running all this stuff. Pull that up and then you get this awesome storage space down below here as well. They really did think of absolutely everything when it came to the Rivian. Then I do get two more outlets and that is it. So if you're curious if it has truck-like qualities, it certainly, certainly does. However, we are not done with storage. We also get a front trunk. So two times here on the key and it is a power opening frunk. Something else really cool is that you might be thinking, Zach, that's not a very deep frunk. And you're right, because this actually has dual stage. So it has these little magnets on it. Boom, now you have more space. You can use it as two different tiers or one big tier together. Really, really smart. I'm really impressed with that. Fold that back down, really, really awesome. Again, two times to close it here on the key, it flashes and then goes down. And I really love this key because this is actually a carabiner. So you can hook this onto your waist, onto your backpack, go out hiking and still have your key with you. Very, very cool about the Rivian. Now we gotta talk about the looks and this is one of the most polarizing parts of the Rivian R1T and Rivian as a whole. They're coming onto the scene with a very fresh, very different appearance and that is very clear here in the R1T. First of all, the headlights look like USB-C ports. The rear taillights look like something out of the 80s. It's really, really polarizing and interesting design. I don't know if I love it. I don't know if I hate it. But what I can say about it is that it's polarizing. It's interesting. It's different. And for someone who drives so many different cars, I love just seeing different things. Whether they're good or bad, just different things is the best. And I love that about this truck. I also love this blue. I think Rivian blue is this sort of signature color for the launch of these vehicles. And I'm excited to be driving one in this spec. But now with all of that stuff being said, what do I think finally driving the Rivian R1T, a brand new vehicle and a brand new manufacturer for 2022? Well, I have to say that I am really impressed with this. Now, let's talk about the downsides real quick. These things are heavy, but all EVs are going to be. Can't really hold this one accountable and others not accountable. And I do think it is priced a little out of reach for a lot of pickup truck owners. But then again, I mean, look at the F-150 Platinums. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you're talking about small change differences. So I really can't hate on it for that either. Let's talk about the things that I do like. I like how modern and new this truck feels. If you're into owning new cutting edge vehicles, Rivian is ready to serve you. I like how it drives. It's actually not very daunting to drive. Yeah, it is big, 
but you get over that pretty quick and it has really tight steering. It has great visual aids for backing up with the backup camera like we talked about. And overall, I do think the tech in here is very sufficient. I don't think it's over the moon. I don't think it's anything super crazy or crazier than Tesla's tech or crazier than the EV Hummer tech, but it's on par. There's some fun gadgets and gizmos to play with. And in a vehicle like this, that's what I want. But what excites me most about this car is that Rivian has been making some big waves for a new company. They are producing Amazon's delivery vehicles, their new electric delivery vehicles. They already have two models, the R1T and R1S, which the R1S will be available here soon. And I think it's really interesting that we're living right now through this EV golden age. It's echoing what was happening in the early 1900s, but instead of gasoline cars with electric cars, seems like a lot of manufacturers are coming out of the woodworks to offer the public EVs. Fisker's making a comeback. Apparently Sony is gonna make an EV. There's always been talks of an Apple EV and this EV and that EV. Well, Rivian actually did it. And I don't plan these video shoots to be during the rain. Obviously, no fun. But I think the rain today is a good metaphor for the EV climate currently. I don't quite remember when it started and I don't know when it'll end. I don't know what is going to happen throughout the course. Right now, it's lightly sprinkling, but bam! Lightning could come out of nowhere. But there's something I love and it might just be an Illinois Midwest thing. But when you're standing on your front porch and you see the storm clouds rolling in, there's a little fire that gets ignited inside of you. There's a little smile that comes to your face. And although you might tell your significant other or family, hey, batten down the hatches, it looks like a bad one. There's also a little excitement that comes with that. And that's how I feel about modern EVs. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm excited about all of them. And although I'm incredibly excited and happy to be driving this R1T here today, I can't wait to drive what Rivian's doing in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years. Maybe this is a blip. Maybe this is the new Saturn where they were here for a good time, not a long time and went away. Maybe there'll be a Rivian preservation group years down the road because they made only a few of them. Maybe this will be the most popular, best-selling automobile in the history of cars. I don't know, and that's exciting to me. I love exploding dead dinosaurs to make noise. I really, really do, and I always will. But you can't deny that these are exciting as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.